Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game So here we're continuing the series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project. And today what I'm doing is updating my Sega Saturn setup guide because a lot of you have been asking in comments for a modern version of this because the Sega Saturn core has hit update all, but it's still tripping a lot of people up. So I'm gonna go through the entire setup process how to get Sega Saturn games booting on your mister, all the different control options, the video options, as well as the BIOS files and games you need to play. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But Sega Saturn is absolutely awesome on the current core as of the recording of this video, but it is not done yet. I did a video a few weeks ago mentioning as such. So just be prepared that not every single game works perfectly. Temper your expectations. Sometimes it's the core and not your setup. Now, because it is an update all, all you need to do is go into your mister, go under scripts and run update all. That is going to bring the core down as well as give you your Sega Saturn folder under games. If you don't have update all set up yet, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can get that going, but I'm assuming most of you do have that. It used to be that we pulled the core from test builds or unstable nightlies, and sometimes they still show up here in case they haven't been incorporated into update all yet, but update all is going to get you 99% of the way there. So once we actually get the core installed with update all, you can go through here and you're going to see that there's minimal options that you actually need to articulate. But the first ones are going to be load boot.bin. Now there's more than one way to do this. This is how I prefer it, is to have a boot.bin file within the Saturn folder that is going to be the BIOS file. And you're going to see here, I'm going to alternate between the high Saturn BIOS version 1.02 and 1.03. There's a very big reason why I use this BIOS, and most people do, and that is down to the fact that it is region free. You do not need to toggle the region switch whatsoever whatsoever on your Sega Saturn Mr. installation. Some games with English translations are still going to boot as Japanese games. So if you use the standard Sega Saturn BIOS, whether a Japanese one or a North American one, you're going to have to articulate that setting right there. Now, some people hate the high Saturn BIOS splash screen. I absolutely love it. So I can't recommend enough that you use this BIOS to get your Saturn going. Now on your micro SD card for your mister, you're going to see here, we're going to go under games. And if you've already run update all, you're going to have a Sega Saturn folder. That is where we're going to put absolutely everything we need to get this running because sometimes the right BIOS file you want may not come down. So underneath here, all the way at the bottom, you're going to see have a file called boot.bin. This is not how you obtain it. You should dump it from your real hardware, but when you get it, it's going to be demarcated with different text. Rename the high Saturn BIOS to boot.bin, that way you can load it into your mister. And be aware the high Saturn is made by Hitachi, really it's just a Sega Saturn console, but Hitachi had rights to reproduce Sega Saturns under their branding because they did some of the hardware for Sega. And because this is a region free BIOS, it's going to work better than anything else you throw at it, outside of a few games which I'll leave in the description. I think three games in total will not launch on the high Saturn BIOS, just down to incompatibility so you can keep a second BIOS on hand, but for 99.9% .9 of everything, the high Saturn BIOS is going to be the way to go, because you're going to be able to boot Japanese games, North American games, any region game you want. It's just going to load it up versus my real Japanese Sega Saturn, which still has a switch in the back to change regions. This is the easiest way to do it, and I can't recommend the high Saturn BIOS enough. Now, as far as your games are concerned, you're going to put them all in the Saturn folder, and I can't recommend enough nested folders. Each game should be in its own. It's going to be so much easier to organize, in my opinion. Now, I use binq format. It's just what I like, but chd is here. It does work. So you can use chd or compressed hunks of data files as well. Definitely saves you on some storage space. Doesn't affect performance whatsoever, but you will see if you go binq. Some games have one q and a couple bins. Some games have one q and like over 60 bins. It's going to be variable depending on what you use but bin Q or CHD will be 100% fine either way. Now, as far as the cartridge is concerned, you're going to see we have a ROM 2 megabyte and a 1 megabyte and 4 megabyte RAM expansion. That is because the Saturn had a 1 and 4 megabyte RAM cartridge that you could install to either improve games or run games that required it. Something like Groove on Fight right here works with both the 1 and the 4 megabyte RAM cartridge and it enhances the performance of the game. So you do need to turn these on in the menu. You can leave them on for the most part. I can't remember if any game will have any issues if it's on all the time. 
Don't forget to map your Saturn buttons without doing that. You're not going to be playing anything whatsoever. And when you want to load up a game, just go up to the top option and pick whatever it is you would like. And because we do have these in folders, everything is neatly organized. I guess if you went CHD, you wouldn't have to use the folder situation. But if you use bin Q, I still recommend you go with all of these folders. And if you see a CD BIOS not found error in the top left hand corner, don't worry about it. We clearly have booted a BIOS just because it's not in the folder we use an alternative means. Now do be aware that the performance on this core is dependent upon the RAM module you use. There is a single RAM core and a dual RAM core, and you can pick either one. I find that both dual and single RAM seem to work almost identical, so that's not that big of a deal. But you need to have a two RAM module chip. I'll leave a link in the description below to Mr. Add-ons and his RAM. I've been using it for all of the tests, and it's been perfect. If you have a four chip module, you're going to see degraded performance on the Sega Saturn core, and that's just down to how it interleaves data in between the RAM chips. It's got to talk to itself and having four chips just slows that process down. I'm not going to get any more technical than that. So if you do have a four RAM chip module, you definitely want to switch over to a two RAM chip. When we're actually into the game here, there's one other thing you really need to do because this core for the last like six weeks or so has supported game saving, which is going to be crucial because you don't want to get too far in. You want to make sure you switch auto save to on by default. That way when you open up the on screen menu again, it's going to save all of your progress that you've saved within the game. This is not a safe state. If you just turn auto save on and access the on screen display, it saves absolutely nothing. I've seen people get confused by that. So make sure you remember you need to save in game and then go to the on screen display. Don't just turn your mister off. Now, as far as other options are concerned, if we go under debug, there's some fun ones that don't really do anything as far as the gameplay is concerned. It actually makes it worse, but you can kind of see how the sausage gets made by enabling or disabling different functions of VDP2. You'll see entire swaths of the screen just go missing, but it gives you a little look under the hood as to everything VDP2 is drawing to the screen at one time and being able to turn them on or off. Now if we go to audio and video, you can stretch the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Dear God, don't do that. But you can go from original to corrected aspect ratio. As far as border and composite blender concerned, I never touch them, but if you need the options, you know where they are. Now don't forget, Sega Saturn did have an analog pad, but if you want to use that, you need to go under input and you need to enable pad 1 or 2 to be the 3D pad. If you want dual sticks or something like Virtual On, you enable it there as well. Now currently, analog controller support for the triggers is not in the main Mister options, but if you use something like a Reflex Adapt, you're going to have a really good time getting something over to USB if you don't have a snack adapter. Because some Sega Saturn games use the analog stick, and some Sega Saturn games use both the analog stick as well as the analog triggers. Sega got there first before pretty much any other company when it came to analog in the triggers, and a lot of games do support the 3D pad. Just be aware that you need to enable it underneath input before you can use any sort of analog controls on the core. I see this trip a lot of people up as well, so just remember you need to enable it. And if you do have the twin sticks for Virtual On, I highly recommend you play around with it because it is an absolute ton of fun. Now I know I said this a few weeks ago, but I know not everyone watches every single video. Be aware that some things are not finished on on the core. Something like X-Men vs Street Fighter here is just not going to be playable and we'll explain that in just a moment. But you're going to find mixed results with the current core as of the way it is as of the recording of this voiceover. Some games are going to 100% play perfectly fine and you're going to see no visual or audio glitches whatsoever. Other games are going to have some glitches and some games like X-Men vs Street Fighter are going to work perfectly fine until they completely stop working. Some games won't boot at all and those will be easy to detect. But if you run into a game that's not running on your current core just leave comment down below. I know pretty much every game that does and doesn't run at this point in time and I will tell you if it's a problem with your setup or if it's a problem with the game. Because you'll see here with X-Men vs Street Fighter everything looks good until we actually go ahead and hit start. Then we get this horrible graphical corruption. It's almost like the colors invert themselves and this error is going to follow us the entire time we try to play this game up until the point that we get into the game and you're going to see what happens then. But just remember this core is not done. SRG320 has done a spectacular job of getting it to where it is, especially so considering his current situation and where he lives. But it is not done, and the fact that it's an update all has been tripping you up. If it was me, I would have put update all as a beta flag, it would have said Saturn beta behind it. But if you don't have a game that's working, then you'll know why. This core just does still need some work, that's totally fine. You're going to get games that freeze, it is what currently happens. But if you want to move over to some games that really do work well, Vampire Savior, also from Capcom, is going to be perfect. And I use these two examples as 
a side-by-side -side to explain where the core currently sits. Some games from the same developers do completely different things. Vampire Savior I would consider to be 100% accurate to real original hardware. X-Men vs. Street Fighter is definitely in the unplayable category right now. So just keep that tucked in the back of your mind. Your results are going to vary depending on what game you're playing on the core. If you have nothing loading up and you have the BIOS, that means you probably have some bad game files. But if you follow this entire tutorial, you're going to be getting Sega Saturn gameplay on your Mr. FPGA. I can't recommend the High Saturn BIOS enough. Having that region-free ability eliminates so many problems you're going to be having with the core, because I know some of you are getting to Sega Saturn for the first time, and you may not even be aware that it does have region coding for individual discs, whether they're PAL, NTSC, Japan, or other regions. But if you follow this guide to use Update All and you get that High Saturn BIOS and all the rest of the files where they need to be, you're going to be playing Sega Saturn today. If you have any problems, leave me a comment down below, but we're done and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.